Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so I just thought I'd give an update. Uh, it's been a while since I've posted um, a, uh, a, a video, and it's because I've been busy working on a, um, a scripting framework. Um, my goal is right now to port some of, like I actually have a bunch of uh, MIDI controllers. Like I have this one here. Um, I've also have this guy here. This, this is actually useless. Um, and then I also have like a, um, an Akai Pro as well. And um, anyway, I wanted to integrate these with FL Studio, but I found that um, while taking code over from the Arteria keyboard, um, there's actually quite a bit of boilerplate code that I needed to rewrite. Um, so I kind of just stopped and I decided I'm going to try to make um, life easier for MIDI script developers. Um, so I think right now it's at a pretty good state um, where a lot of uh, key features of the framework that I wrote is uh, mature. Um, there's probably going to be some more drastic changes. So I'll forewarn you if you plan to use my framework um, to, you know, like be forewarned that there may be a couple big refactors that's going to happen that could deprecate a lot of um, the existing code. Um, but um, anyway, I just thought I'd present a video um, to give you a preview of, um, you know, how how easy it is or how easy it will become to write uh, MIDI script with this. Um, so this is a uh, MIDI device. Um, it's called the Artifon Orba. Um, I actually don't like this device. Uh, when I bought it, I don't, I don't really know why I bought it. It looked cool. Um, you know, it's got these buttons that you can push and you can change instruments. And, um, you know, tilting it will give it different effects. Um, and same as like sliding here. Um, and so it seemed like an interesting device at the time, but there's not much you can do with it. Um, the, I think the idea was you could use it as a drum and, you know, hit it as well. Um, and it seemed cool, but, you know, it's not really practical. Um, and on top of that, with FL Studio, there's, you know, there's not much integration. Um, so I thought today I would just show off, um, you know, how to integrate this into a MIDI script. Um, so I have this connected. Um, you can see my screencast. Uh, the thing I did do was I did connect it to, um, to, to Bluetooth. Um, so, so, you know, you can... Um, and let's see, uh, my goal, I guess, is, you know, I'm going to turn down the volume so I don't have these random playing noises. Um, and what I want to do is be able to push these buttons and, you know, do stuff with it. So maybe I could make these sliders or I can make um, these switch channels, um, you know, in the channel rack and, and maybe slide like this to control the uh, mixer, the mixer volume. Um, so I'll show you, I'll just you know, write something quick uh, in this video of, of how to do that. Um, so first, you know, um, the, uh, let me show you the first is um, the framework that I'm using. Uh, it is located, well, take a while to load. It is located in um, github.com slash arjuang. And it's called uh, Rum. Um, I wasn't creative about the naming, so I just called it, you know, Ray's Universal MIDI Library. Um, but anyway, this is, you know, this is the framework located here. I've actually written stuff already for the Novation Launch Key Mini, um, but you know, it's, um, yeah, it's 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 just an example right now. I haven't really polished it. Um, and it's kind of like my test script for um, making sure that the the um, framework looks nice or if it looks terrible. Um, so, but th this is uh, in here. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna show you how to, what, what you would do. Um, so once you have, um, you know, rum loaded, um, you know, we can go here and there's a bunch of tools. Um, so let's just start with the debugger tool. And, um, and what you can do here is now we can actually just bring up the, the scripting console and we just need to look at the MIDI code. So it looks like as soon as I pick it up, um, you know, there's already B9 status messages. So a MIDI code, uh, a MIDI message just basically composes of three essential bytes, a status byte, a data one, and a data two. Um, and, you know, basically you just need to figure out, you know, what each thing does. So if I just press the button, 
um, you know, there is a 0x99, uh, which is note on, and, and I believe it's channel, uh, well, it's channel 9, but if you uh, base it off of a 1 index, then it's going to be channel 10. So this is channel 10. Um, so 99 is the note on, and 89 is the note off. And it looks like for this button, it is 0x24. Yeah, 0x24. Um, and I wonder what this data to is. It's probably the velocity. Uh, 27. So if I move this, okay. So these B9s are probably, um, you know, I can treat these like slider values. So if I, if I, if I am, uh, so you can see here, if I'm moving these, uh, left and right, you can see the, the B9 status messages getting sent. Uh, if I just press it, um, you know, See if I can do that. Uh, there is always a 89 and a 99. If you if you're wondering what these are, um, you know you could always look up um, uh, MIDI status code, um, and it'll give you an idea of like what the status codes are. So anything in the 90 to you know 9F range is note on, and anything in 80 to 8F is note off. So that's usually you know when you tap. And these um, B, the B messages I'm seeing is related to control mode change. Um, so that's what these B9s are. Um, and these are these are for the different channels. So B0 is channel 1, B9 is channel 10. Um, okay. And let's see. So so we have this one. So let's let's take some notes. Um, so for 89, so we, we care about the 89, uh, anything in the 80s to 8F messages for the note on when I press this and it looks like it sends uh, 0x24 um, and on and off okay so we know it's 0x24 um, this other one is 0x26 so that's 26 and oh wait yeah this one is 26 this one is 2A, I should write these down. Um, I'll take some notes. So 0x, uh, what did I say it was 24? So 0x89, 0x24, this is the drum one. 0x89, 0x26 is a drum two okay so i'll just start working with these two and see if i can do stuff with it um so let's bring up uh, python or sorry and um let me add a script new python file okay and we have to call this device artifon orba um and sure i'll add it and let me um, use a template somewhere. So we need on in it. Oh wait, actually I'll just use it from this guy. Dump MIDI. Oh wait, no. Yeah, let's grab it from Innovation. Okay, so these are the three basic ones. Um, so copy. And okay, um, so the there's a different thing now that you'll see, which is that um, you know FL Studio scripts have these three basic, or well, you you can add them if you want, but um, they have basic functions. So this is the init. So when um, when uh, FL Studio first loads, it calls on init. Um, and then when it uh, when there's nothing happening, you know, um, every millisecond or so, it'll call an on idle call. And um, whenever a keyboard, uh, a device MIDI note is sent, um, you'll get this on MIDI message. And uh, the thing that I changed was I added these uh, decorators. So um, these decorators are basically what they'll do is. Um, I'm going to modify this function so that in addition to calling on in it um, and all the stuff in it, uh, there will be custom code that I've added that you won't see. It's actually hidden in here, which is kind of nice. 
Um, and behind the thread, I um, set up schedulers. I set up um, a bunch of um, processors um, so that I can hook in things really easily. And it, it also lets me uh, add in really easy syntax for you know interpreting these events. So let me let me show you what I mean. Um, okay, and let me import this guy as well. Okay, so um, right now I'm interested in you know interpreting this first button and the second button just as an example. So there is a decorator called uh, trigger when trigger when uh, let me import it. And um, what it does is it takes uh, various matchers. Matchers is a function that um, it's it's a function that will return true or false. Um, so this is going to be constructing a function. Actually, sorry, let me do this. MIDI has uh, okay, and uh, I am interested in status code zero x. What I say eighty nine. Xerox 89 and Xerox 24. Xerox 89 and data 1, Xerox 24. Um, and this is, I can call the method anything I want. On, uh, what did I say? It was drum, drum button press. Okay, and it's gonna receive a MIDI message. Um, so in Python, in Python 3, um, they have these ability to type. Um, you can specify the the message type in here. It's just a it's a type hint. Um, it doesn't really do anything. You can actually, if you're used to Python, uh, most of the time you'll just see it like this. Uh, I add it in here so that when I use an IDE, it'll um, complete it. And um, uh, currently. Um, the Python version of FL Studio supports simple type hints, so I'm, I'm using this. Um, okay, so we detect a drum press. What do I want to do? Um, so I've also wrapped uh, FL Studio, and I'm interested in choosing the active channel to say track, is it one? Yeah, channel one, okay. And, um, you know, we also should check if uh, channel rack dot the number of channels, if you know it is uh, greater than equal to one. Otherwise, um, you know, it's going to throw an exception if you try to change to an invalid channel. So that's why I'm doing this. Okay, so that's one, and let me do one more, which is I said it was twenty six. This guy was a oh, wrong one. 26, okay. Um, so let's change that to 26. And so now what'll happen is when we detect a uh, note on event at, you know, with um, the first button, data one, 24, then it'll do this. If it's a second one, so this is not drum, this is bass is what they call it. Um, then I'm just going to trigger channel two. Okay, and that's it. Let's load this and try it. Try it out in FL Studio. Okay, so we need to go to um, the options MIDI settings and change this to, oh, you know, I forgot to update the name. So every, um, Every script needs a name at the top. Uh, so here we go. So we'll call this um, Artifon Orba. Okay, and now let's load this. So MIDI settings, Artifon Orba, oh, here. I think I may need a refresh. Let's see. Here we go. Artifon Orba. So we have that here. And I can close it. Go to script output. And okay, let's give this a try. Let me bring up the video. Here's a device and here's a channel rack right here. So Oh, I jumped. <laughs> okay, so I guess the index actually starts at zero, but you can see 
you know, when pushing these, I can, I can actually switch between the two. Um, you might notice that it's actually playing sound, and that's because I forgot to mark the messages as handled. Um, so make sure if you, you know, if you deal with this, that you mark these messages as handled. Um, okay, and let's try that again. So, oh wait, and I wanted to fix the index indices. So I said the first index is zero and the second one is one. Okay, um, so let's take a look again, reload. And here is the video. Okay, so here's one being pressed, there's two. Uh, it's still signaling sound. And I think it's because the reason it's signaling sound is because um, this is the note off and I should be looking at note on. <laughs> um, that way I killed the note on signal. Let's try that again. Um, where'd it go? Okay, reload. Okay, let's see that. Okay, much better. Okay, so that's a simple example. Um, and it's, it's, it's really nice because, um, you know, I didn't have to do anything except just input the conditions for which this function is triggered on. Um, and it makes it extremely powerful. Um, there's some things that I'm doing now, which um, I'm, I'm trying to add this concept of panels. And this is the part that's still very um, up in the air. Um, it hasn't been finalized, so but I just wanted to show you a quick preview of uh, why I think this is going to be an awesome feature. Um, so the idea of panels is that um, you could just plug and play components in. Um, so I plan on throwing in a metronome. Um, eventually, I'll throw in a peak graph. Um, you know, maybe a grid uh, button editor. Um, but the idea is that instead of needing to like input and define all the events yourself, you can actually just define really simple stuff like, okay, this is going to trigger um, the drum pad recorder. Um, so this is like if you want to record a pattern um, or this is going to stop the record pat pattern. And the things in here only define the outputs. So um, I'm trying to work out how to do this better, but um, the functions in here, if you don't define it, it'll still work functionally, but you won't have any lights or displays. And so um, these methods just define what, how do you, you know, how do you interact? How do you show the output on the keyboard? And so that's the, the tricky part is just basically, you know, not the functionality, but just how to um, get the output to display correctly. How do you display to your LCD or to the um, lighting on the buttons? And the reason I had to do it this way is because every keyboard's different. Some keyboards have an LCD screen, some don't. Um, and I'm trying to also think of a way to restructure this so it uh, looks better. But um, you know, this is just um, a, a start. Um, I, I have some ideas, and it, it's starting to look nice, but I'm, I'm trying to make this look even more cleaner. Um, so anyway, I just gave you a quick, um, you know, a quick demo of this new framework I'm writing. It's a little bit technical, um, so I apologize, but it also gives you an idea of what it's like to write a MIDI script. Um, but yeah, if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions, you know, feel free to, to leave it in the comments. Uh, oh, and I started a Discord server. Um, it is in the uh, FL Studio, or sorry, in the um, in the, the plugin homepage. I'll, I'll just link it in this video, but um, you know, you can leave comments in the Discord as well. But uh, if you can't find it, it is um, it is set up here, so you can you can leave messages for me here as well. All right, um, that'll be it for now. Um, you know, uh, and if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them. All right, thank you.